ओम असतो मा सद्गमय तमसो मा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमय ओम शांति 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 टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस हाउ टू थिंक हाउ एक्जैक्टली शुड द थॉट प्रोसेस बी for us to succeed in anything in life because we have already discussed so much on how repeated thought makes manifestation possible so then how important it is to think rightly remember this that if you have to drive a car you must be on the driver's seat if you are not on the driver's seat and yet you want to drive a car you never know where the car will go so also if you want to drive your life to a particular destination a particular goal you must be on the driver's seat you must be driving your car you must drive the instruments of your usage your instruments of perception your senses and mind should be driven by you obviously and that is why it is so important to manufacture a conscious thought process so that you remain the driver of your car and your body mind take you to your destination in life a conscious guided deliberate willful thought process is the secret of success a positive thought process which is guided from within you are deeply conscious and so your thoughts go the way you want them to go this kind of a thought process through an organized mind will take you to your goals in life let me draw your attention to a few facts about your own thought process see when a sculptor wants to sculpt a beautiful image what does he first do he imagines visualizes the image perfectly in his mind to do this he declutters his mind he removes all the unnecessary thought modifications and concentrates on what he wants to create once that image is perfectly set in his mind and the block of stone is in front of him he will just chip off from the stone what is not in his mind by the power of visualization he translates that image into the stone it is that simple so initially what is required is an uncluttered mind if the mind is full of erratic thought employ means to declutter it use a technique of meditation use a technique of yoga do anything to bring the mind to a state of relative calmness and there visualize your goal in its entirety deep vis- visualization it means concentrated thought basically intense focus on what you want to manifest in your life if you are able to provide this the next step will be manifestation that will naturally happen so then the, the decluttered mind perfect visualization and a perfectly organized thought process will make manifestation possible remember this in such a state whatever you think repeatedly will become a reality for you you will manifest it this is the power of your thought what you think repeatedly you will become you will manifest what you feel repeatedly you will attract into your life you will experience it and what you imagine repeatedly you will create it how exactly does this thinking uh, make manifestation possible this is something i would like to draw your attention to through a very 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 important incident in the life of a great spiritual master who was called swami brahmananda he was the spiritual son of shri ramakrishna paramahamsa and he was a spiritual dynamo so one day he gave out this very important teaching regarding mind and manifestation it was a very hot day in belurmat in kolkata and it was almost 3 o'clock in the afternoon 
and swami brahmananda was sitting it is it is so hot and humid there in the summers so a lot of sweating and one of his disciples entered and immediately swami brahmananda told him come on let us meditate on the himalayas let us meditate on the great mountains and the snow and the the beautiful crisp air that will cool us down it will it will refresh us then he let out a very secret teaching he said you know how this mind is many times in the mind all sorts of thoughts are there many sanskars are there impressions of past thoughts past actions all these cloud and cover up the mind but at the very base the foundation of this mind lies awareness if you empty the mind of thoughts and even of sanskars even of all these erratic modifications and impressions the awareness will come to the forefront chaitanya dab kore jale uthe he said the awareness will become prominent in your mind once your mind is filled with awareness which was always there but you were identified with the thought process that was the problem so once you remove thought you learn the art of removing thought you will understand that your mind is always filled with awareness just like he gave an example say a glass of water there is already space in that glass but you can't see it that you see only the water you pour out the water you will realize there is space in the glass so also there is consciousness in your mind that is why thought appears to be conscious thought enlivened from within as it were but this consciousness or awareness the reflected awareness in your mind cannot be easily found because of your engagement with your thought process your complete identification with your thought so quell this a little calm down the mind remove these thoughts consciously and you will come to the fact of your awareness once you understand this you will find your mind to be magical capable of really realizing any thought you place there once the mind attains this state of pure awareness any thought you place there will ignite will get inflamed and you will realize it as it were it will manifest in the outer world and then he gives this very important parable as an example here this parable was given by shri ramakrishna himself it is the parable of the miraculous tub some of you may be knowing it some of you may not know it so let me give you the whole parable here and then we will see how subjectively swami brahmananda uses this parable shri ramkrishna used to say this this parable that you know in earlier times in villages indian villages the dyers used to sit in the market place and people used to come to them to dye their cloth in any color they wanted and they would dip it into various colors and give them the cloth now one day in a market place there sat a dyer who had only one tub and no colors but it was a miraculous tub of dye so that whatever cloth anybody brought and whatever color they wanted he would dip it into the same tub and give them that colored the color which they wanted that colored cloth he would remove from the tub and give them so somebody comes to him and says i want a yellow colored cloth and they would give him his their piece of cloth he would dip it into the same tub and remove a yellow colored cloth and give it to them somebody asked for blue he would dip it into the same tub not changing colors not changing dyes but in, into the same tub and remove blue colored cloth and give it to them somebody comes and asks for green he would take the white cloth dip it into the same tub it would come out green and he would give it to them so this was the miraculous tub of dye which produced any color anyone wanted and then came to this man a person who said 
well please dye my cloth according to the color that is in your tub now using this parable shri ramkrishna gave out his teaching that you see god comes to each person as per his desire and wishes ye yatha mam prapadyante tam tathaiva bhajamya ham the bhagavad gita says which means god will come to us in the form and in the way in which we desire according to our bhav that is the meaning of dipping a cloth into this same tub of dye and removing any color you want but one who asks for the color which is in the tub he is asking for the nature of god as he is the nirgun nirakar aspect of god so when you dip the cloth into that you you dip it you get the color of the dye which is in the tub that is asking for the nature of brahman so this is the parable which sri ramkrishna used to describe the sagun and nirgun aspects of god god with form the formless aspect of god to explain this he used this parable now the same parable swami brahmananda interprets in a subjective sense he says you see that man came and placed his single tub and he could remove any colored cloth from that same tub you know your mind is like that the mind bereft of thoughts bereft of all kinds of impressions bereft of even sanskars that pure mind gets filled up with awareness and whatever you dip then into that kind of mind you will realize it you can get from that mind whatever you want like you dip a particular in your mind suppose there is desire for a particular color you can get the same color from that same tub so also a mind which is imbued with full awareness any thought you dip into it the thought will get ignited it will make manifestation possible you will realize the thought in your life this is the power of your mind so what is the mind which is born of meditation the pure mind full of awareness bereft of a conditioned thought process that is the miraculous tub of dye swami brahmananda says from which you can realize anything you can get anything out of it shri ramkrishna himself said as one thinks so he receives whatever you think in that state of mind will become reality you will realize it that is why you see swami vivekananda would say this is the power of thought thought is the propelling force in us and that is why fill up your mind with the highest thoughts think of them day after day month after month you will realize them swami vivekananda also gave us the power of thought by saying the greatest men are the silent ones who have known the power of thought they know that if they sit in a cave and think five such powerful thoughts those thoughts and if they die there they know very well that those five thoughts will penetrate through the mountains will flow over the oceans and bombard human society it will they will change the minds of men and women in society this is the power of enlivened thought this is the power of thought born of this state of awareness so this is the actual miraculous tub you can say or the instrument of change in your hands your thought mechanism is really the magic wand in your hand through which you can attain anything you want in life but remember this point also that thought is energy energy does not discriminate between positive and negative good and bad so if you place a fearful thought a fearsome thought or a worrisome thought in your mind you will realize that also which means a general purification of life is required so that you are able to think only wholesome positive good thoughts when placed in pure awareness they will ignite and make that manifestation possible so remember this whatever you dwell upon you are activating energy along those lines 
whatever you repeatedly think, you are activating its manifestation. I will give you a simple example for this. Suppose you have a deep-rooted fear of, say, lifts. Then just thinking of it can make you fearful. But you can overcome this fear if you repeatedly think in your mind, what can it do to me? Why should I be fearful of it? All will be well. All will be fine with me. Just this simple repetition in your mind. Test it and see. And you can overcome the fear of lifts. Suppose there is some false criticism in your life. You, there is a multiple choice how you handle it. You can either say, oh, that person is like that. That is why he or she is criticizing me. So this will lead to resentment. You can think, no, it is the outflow, overflow of his or her bad mood, which I should try to help. So you radiate positivity. Gradually, that mind will change. This is the second option you have. Either you radiate negativity or you radiate positivity. Or third is you just keep quiet. Only a saint can do that. So among all these options, it depends on you what you choose and what you repeat in your mind. What you will repeat in your mind, that you will experience in outer life. So this is the way the thought mechanism works. Vivekananda used to say, if matter is powerful, thought is omnipotent. That is the power of thought. And that is why the ability to produce continuous positive thought, empowered with awareness in a perfectly conscious state, this is at the heart of human development. That is why we say yoga is at the heart of human development. It makes you deeply conscious from within so that any thought becomes perfectly re realizable. And this is the magic given in your hands. You know, your mind is the instrument through which you can attain anything in your life because you are a, a sort of localized consciousness functioning through a body-mind complex. Your mind is the instrument of change and your thought process is the actual magic wand in your hand through which you can attain all your goals in life. Everything depends upon how you use it. So get used to the affirmative, positive thinking which we have always recommended along with the practice of yoga, becoming deeply conscious from within. Affirmations are of the nature of, you will find them in Vivekananda literature, plenty of affirmations. He would say, to think like this itself is so ennobling and elevating. I can do anything and everything. All power is within me. I can manifest whatever I want in life. I am at the helm of change. All power is already within me. I have only to manifest it through the power of thought. I can be anything that I want to be. I can do anything that I want to do. There are no obstacles in my life. These are the kind of affirmations that you should practice. All is well with me. I am a child of God. Nothing can be against me. All is well with me because my mind is with me and God is with me. So these affirmations with an empowered awareness, when you empower these affirmations with awareness, I mean, they will help you realize anything you want to in life. Let me conclude with Vivekananda's own words. This is what he meant when he said, call upon the sleeping soul and see how it awakens. Power will come, glory will come, goodness will come, purity will come, and all that is excellent will come. Once the soul is aroused to self-conscious activity, you must know how to empower your thought process through this power of your soul, the power of the Atman within you. Om Shanti 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 Peace, peace, peace.